here. I do wonder with the Zua ban, the ETC ban, are Tainted Orphans looking to pick up the Johanna? She is the top, top priority tank in NGS Division A right now. I can see why they'd like to have her. Um, Medivh banned away. Definitely a respect ban. Nobody wants to deal with the rotten Medivh. It, it just feels yep. bad. It feels bad playing against Medivh, especially when you have like this super awesome like Wombowee burst comp. Abathur banned away. Like, yeah. get him out of here. He's so good on the map. Just healing everything up. Makes the whole objective completely pointless, despite how hard you fight over it. We are absolutely at the high level of play here with Division A. It's the level before Heroic Division, and therefore Medivhs can be absolutely terrifying because the teams will have that coordination. They'll have that skill to really execute a Medivh comp well. Johanna, as you called out, very effectively is the first ban. Uh, first pick, sorry, with Stukov Raider being the first two picks here. Two really solid choices going up. Nice poke to go into that. Johanna, Raider can poke from a safe distance. And Stukov can safely throw out uh, their CC. I see the fly as well. It's just Yeah, I thought it was insane. a B for a second. Oh, it was no. yellow, so I panicked. <laughs> it's a fly. Okay. Tahaka and Greymane picked up. Tahaka is really strong on the map, able to just go in between the lanes, grab what he needs, and then burrow down to the tribute so they can make a team, whether it be a 5v5, 4v5, whatever they need. That global presence is just so powerful. Absolutely. So with that global presence, we'll see how they do with it as Anna is going to be the next ban. Very interesting. Anna Grey Main is, of course, a combo. It's not the best, but it does do reasonable enough to be value considering its just effectiveness. But now, with Anna banned out, Stokov Rainer taken. No worries about the about the Rhaegar, by the way. Not picked up at all and not even prioritized yet. So, with Greyman on the board, I wouldn't be surprised to see that being picked up by Tainted... Excuse me, Tainted Orphans as Yorel. Going to be banned away. Controlling that off lane makes a lot of sense. With the hack already on the board, they don't want anyone who can dominate him. Alrighty, so like you said, we still have the option for Rhaegar. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, minion miners pick it up right here. They Actually, they have the support. Never mind, I'm a fool. Ragnaros and Anubarak coming out. We saw this the last time we casted the minion miner. Weskra really strong on that Anubarak. And Marshall is a Ragnaros. He, he, they're, they're, they're their own a Fire Lord in their own right. <laughs> I was trying to make a pun, then I realized I tried to make two jokes at the same time, and it was awful. Wonder if we'll get to see that, uh, what is it, the E build with the, the Speedy Boy? Yeah, the Lava Burst build. Yeah, if we'll see the Lava Burst build once again. And Deckard and Lee Ming coming out for the side of Tainted Orphans. Lee Ming, once again, fantastic poke to interrupt that tribute. And Deckard is actually... Um, I think he's the first or second most prioritized support in Division A right now. So very strong with that Ruby being up almost every single Q after the changes. All right. Falstad is the final pickup here. It does give them a lot of map control with Ragnaros and Falstad as their main, uh, as their global potential if you go for Lava Wave, which is to be expected here. But my concern is, boy, they squish. They very squish, <laughs> and with Greymane Lee Ming as the damage dealers, I am concerned for the survivability of minion miners. I have to kind of agree with you. They've got Anubarak as the tank, but Anubarak isn't a very power... I mean, I shouldn't say powerful. He's not a very beefy tank, I think is the best yeah. way to put it, especially... Unlike ETC, who is only beef. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the team is very squish, as you stated. Lee Ming, great man. We'll have to see if they can tear through or if the spell shield from Anubarak will provide enough safety to get through with the poke of Rainer. We're going to be finding out as we head into game number one of this best of three. Ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side, in the orange trunks, it will be the Minion Miners. And playing for them, Sir Makov Cheese will be playing on the Stukov. Brutha will be playing the Rainer. Weskra on the Anubarak. We have Marshall playing on the Ragnaros. And chilling in the bot lane, it's Himibo playing the Falstad. And over on the left, in the blue, we have Waffle Man on that Deckard Came. Will to live on that what is that gray, gray main bridge to death on the johanna reaver on that Li Ming and variations is the tahaka got those onion rings out master level tahaka i see 
Nice to see. Well, I'm well. We'll keep an eye on him then, because now the pressure's on. Now we're expecting a lot out of you. Beetles coming in for a Nubarak. Beetle build coming out of level one. We have the fetid touch for the Stukov here, and we're starting off with an Aether Walker. Sorry, an Aether Walker coming in from the Li Ming. And ooh, field study for Deckard. That's a bit out of the ordinary. Field study, that is the spell power, so I think that'll be really nice just so when those really heated fights come in, if there is a lot of damage taken by the Rainer or the Faustas, since it does, um, the minion miners do have a lot of burst on their team, they should be able to, you know, get that extra uh, healing out, keep the team alive a little bit longer, and then once she gets true. to roll of Stone Curse, it's just really devastating. Or is this battle deckard with Ruby? get the spell power from field study and then drop the ruby for huge damage output and just use that massive burst and have Deckard 1v5. <laughs> I have played my fair amount of Battle Deckard in ARAM. I haven't played it in a real game. However, that doesn't mean it's not a viable strategy. We're seeing the teams just go ahead and grab their siege camps. And now it looks like... Grey Maiden is headed to the Bruisers. Minion Miners have an early start on their Bruisers, and everyone is just looking to pick up some early soak. Uh, try and get as much experience as they can. The race to four is so important because it's usually when the tribute spawns. The race is actually a little slower here than usual, as we did see Ace in the hole as opposed to the Exterminator coming in from Rayner. Whereas Grey Bain, he's his own exterminator. He just absolutely deletes everything in his way. But like you <laughs> said, they started a little bit later. And we see level fours coming in. Full beetle build, but looks a bit as an Uber. I go for Bed of Barbs, one of the best level four times if you don't plan on diving very deep. And there's the Ruby. Maybe we will see Deckard 1v5 fools. I've never seen these two talents comboed together. I'm very excited. We see it comes yes. out. No rubies, either because he didn't activate or there were no heroes hit. Okay, so there, there is. Never mind. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. Raymond coming out, trying to just destroy that camp as quickly as they can. But the whole team is here, Ragnaros included. Thank you. Um, he's just stepping up, trying to clear everything out. Johanna and Grayman going super hand, but a nice penetrating round by Rainer chases them back. You called it at the start. Marshall going for his patented build of the la of the Blast Wave, Engulfing Flame, and Slow Burn. And Falstad, I think you might have watched the stream last time because I called it last time. When you're going up against a burst composition, yes, hammer gains is fantastic when you're laning. But when you're up against burst, that pre-damage protection of the shield is actually going to give you some really good value. And as such, static shield coming in. That I feel like I implement something. And if not, he's just really smart. Because I believe <laughs> I'm going to go with he's really smart. Because people shouldn't listen to me. Him be both going to back up barrel roll. Easily gets out of danger. And an uncontested tribute taken by Tainted Orphans. I didn't even realize the tribute had spawned. That's how quick and quiet it was. We see Anubarak and Falsa down here in the bottom. And now Sir Mac of Cheese is also down here. They're going to try and get that early uh, tower. They are able to do so. Stukov taking a ton of damage from the towers because they hit like trucks now. They really do as level 7 is hit here. He's going for damage. Horadric Cube. Oh, sorry. Ca sorry. Canine's Cube. Sorry. I thought that was the cooldown reduction. I am, am mistaken. We see the Calamity coming in for Li Ming. We went for Charge Blast as well. Go for Battle Ming. Falstad just makes it out before being denied his port. And we are also seeing, importantly, the Enhanced Agility. Anubarak really... Sorry, Anubarak, sorry. Dahaka really going for that mobility. Definitely. We see that Tainted Orphans counter with a tower of their own down here in the bottom lane. The Tribute will be spawning in another 30 seconds. And they're sticking around. They want this second... Tower. It's going to go ahead and pressure away at that. Bruther will be a little bit late to this tribute, and it looks like Tainted Orphans might not even contest at all. They're heading up now. They might. So, Bridge to Death has been rumbled, but Johanna, and therefore, is fine. But, however, Marshall takes a lot of damage. Here comes Anubrak from the side with a great little tongue, and Marshall is going to be picked off here. Anubrak also in trouble. Wesker gets a stun, but no way to get out. Already using the Burrow Charge. Down goes Falstad. And yeah, the burst with resets means, oh no, we have nothing to actually protect ourselves yet. As Brutha will escape, but that'll be a second tribute. Go, a second tribute denied for one more second. I saw Sir Mac of Cheese almost get taken out there. Now they could be in some trouble as they gather the tribute, but he's able to just go ahead and back up. Also, rotated so late there. It was really unfortunate. He kind of flew in and then just got popped. 
However, they did have these bottom camps pushing, so they will get a little bit of damage. You can see they're missing out on a little bit of experience here. Li Ming having to clear, they do lose the gate. Second tower still taking a little bit of damage. One siege giant is in range, and Li Ming, even with charge sparse, isn't actually getting some good value here. The tower goes down as well. There was a bit of a scuffle here, but Bridge to Death was not sniped away, and therefore was able to take it through just in time for his team to hit level 10. All right, this might have to be a seated tribute, but uh, members of minion miners, eh, they're, they're not going to do it. They don't have level 10. They don't want to fight. Dahaka could be in a little bit of a pinch up top. However, Marshall, a little too far away, is going to bang on them with the beetles, but variations, no problem at all. Tries to counter. Easily sidestepped by Wesgra. There you go back in. More damage to variations, really forcing him back, but... Again, you called it. No level 10. Uncontested curse comes out. But level 10 now finally available for the defense for minion miners. Going to be seeing Cocoon, Rainer's Raider, pretty standard stuff. Ragnaros has perished. Where did he die? I don't even know. Died up in the top lane to maybe Tahaka and the uh, the camp. Maybe got caught underneath the camp or underneath the tower. I really like what minion miners did, however. And they knew they weren't going to be able to grab this tribute. They knew they were going to get cursed. So they just decided they were going to go and clear the lanes as well as they can. Unfortunately, Ragnaros did fall, but uh, they were able to. Oh, no. Sneaky Bless Shield Flank, Gust came out and hit everyone who wasn't killing him. And Falstad, he, he tried, it was just literally on the line between being hit by Gust and not. He does get taken now, a little bit uh, little bit unlucky there, he's able to survive. Water lift, pushing in, Lava Wave coming in. Sidestepped, nicely done by Tainted Orphans. Unable to hit any of the heroes, it looks like it should be the keep wall going down. We have five more seconds on the curse. The team just having to back up as far as they can on the side of minion miners. Really struggling. We see Stukov try to pressure them away, but a very full health boss is coming to fight. And now the new cool. rack does fall, getting caught in that boss road. Caught by the boss room flailing. Swipe comes out. So back oh, geez, is so low full retreat. But here comes the here comes Ragnaros Multicore. They try to turn it around, but look at all these resets. They are just powering through this, picking up kills every single fight they take. This is a 4v5, by the way, as Dahaka did not join this, and Ragnaros Bless Shield, they pick it up. They even stun Falz and almost catching him at the boss route as they look for Brutha for keep both targeting bridge to death. Doing good damage, they take down the keep, and if they pick up kills, they might try and race before they shouldn't. But they picked up another kill there with Rainer being taken out. That is now nine kills to zero. There are more kills from the side of Tainted Orphans than there are minutes in this game. Wow, it's really impressive. It is kind of a steamroller for the side of Tainted Orphans. They're looking for blood, and I really have to commend them on their comps. Everything following up so nicely. I have Bless Shield. Okay, I've got. Uh Haradric Cube with uh, the Ruby, so you can go in and not worry about the towers. Li Ming follows up. Somebody dies. They do it all again because their uh, CC and cooldowns are really short and easily spammable. It's been really nicely played by the side of Tainted Orphans. They're doing a very good job right now as Marshall cleaning out the lane. Doesn't get the catapult, but the minions will finish that off. However, a second one's on the way. Wants to be available for the next objective, though. Wesker and Brutha taking that down, using the Beatles to tank. Nicely done. And it looks like Tainted Orphans are looking at the boss on the Minion Miner side of the map. Are they going to let them contest? They don't have 13, so this is going to be a risky play. However, Mighty Gust is up, so we could see a Gust steal. We will have to see as right now they move forward. The boss is going to be zoned. They scout it. I mean, they know it's not being done now. So they're all good. They're right around the corner from level 13. Those will be even talents for this. We're able to pull them around the map, and that's just kind of been the name of the game. Just Tainted Orphans pulling Minion Miners around. They are level 13 now, so this is a, ta a fight on even talent tiers if Minion Miners wants to take it, and I think that's a really strong, good idea. This middle fort is going to go down with the camp. Everybody there. Looks like they might even just give up the tribute. No, they're going to head towards it. They're on the way. They got the timing pretty spot on with that. No one attempted to take it. They didn't want to get pinged off. However, there are two people here in this mid lane. I wouldn't be surprised to try and see a 4v3 coming out. And that's what they'll do. They'll send up four people here. Drag comes out onto Wesker. Forces him to back up. Here comes Falset. So this into a 5v5 as Li Ming will finally make it to the fight. We're going to see Li Ming just post out. And Gust. Gust comes out incredibly early. Mm. This might come back to bite them. And now Barrel or Wesker just gets melted. Li Ming disintegrating that cocoon. 
And now it is Minion Miners on the run. They're just going to go ahead and back up as Flailing Swipes comes out. And was, the fight was over before it even began. Boss got aggro to zoning Brutha away from the fight as well. And that fight, like you said, is over. That is going to be the tribute going over to Tainted Orphans as they hit level 16 as well. And this is the time to vantage Mirable by which is going to give him some decent value here. Fanaticism, Executor, Heratric Staff going with the stun here for Deckard Kane. Really trying to punish any dive potential and tunneling claws for Dahaka. It's going to be the boss just going straight over to Tainted Orphans and they're in full control of this map. Everybody just trying to soak as much as they can, grab 16 safely, and then maybe they can take another fight at even Talon Tears when the next tribute spawns. It's going to be on the defensive side of uh, Tainted Orphan, so a little bit harder. And now the team, they're trying to fight down 16. However, Greyman is in a, or Johanna, pardon me, is in a real pickle. Ragnaros, however, does fall and now the tribute is up in 17 seconds and he'll be 15 seconds late to that spawn time. Curse bullet, easy kill onto Ragnaros there. They followed that up perfectly just with massive damage. School, uh, Stukov has completed his level one quest, has been able to finish the Fetid Touch here, which will help a lot. That mana cost reduction and the cooldown reduction as well means he's going to have more chances to fear in a reaction here. See if we can keep that up. There's still a full level away from level 16. Nubrak very ambitious with the burrow, but they are going to be able to finish off at this boss before it takes keeps. However, counter boss, second boss being taken by Tainted Orphans. This is the third boss of the game, and the yeah. I don't think Minion Miners have had a chance to really go to any of these tribute. This is another one they've just had to give up. Johanna sitting very far back, comfortable, but they don't think that the Minion Miners are going to show up and take this. And just like that, even without Greymane, a very slow boss clear, nothing they can do about it. Meantime, Greymane grabbing Siege Giants. He's already weakened up this top plane with the boss, so this will be pushing straight onto Keep and Fountains. Going to give them even more map pressure here. Going to rotate down and rejoin with the rest of the team. Meantime, that team setting up, trying to set a trap, seeing if they can catch anyone out before that boss arrives. Out comes the Lava Wave to try and get a little bit of damage on that boss because this is going straight to core and we could be looking at the end of the game. However, Minion Miners do now have 16. The Molten Core comes out from Ragnaros. So hopefully they'll be able to deter that boss a little bit, but they're melting down this uh, Ragnaros health here. But what they did with that is force the retreat out of Tainted Orphans. And as such, they're actually going to be able to defend this without too much pressure. And that is a good news for them. They're even going to let this move on. This much health will kill, will take off shield. No, well, my mistake. We're not that late in the game yet. They're going to try and rush in with the great uh, blast wave. But it's not enough here with the silence, with isolation onto Ragnaros. It's just an easy turn. Waiting swipe comes out one more time. But they're just going to be able to rush him down here. Nice uh, penetrating back. round. Uh, however, so, it's not going to be enough. Zhukov gives his life. And this yep. could be the end of the game. The team running back. They don't have Gust to defend now. They're going to rush this down. No Gust. Rainer's Raider is back, but he's dragged and into his death. Falstad has almost no mana. All he has is auto attacks here. And the shield kept him alive throughout the fight, but he has no way to actually finish anyone off here. And as such, looks like this is going to be GG in game number one. It's going to go uh, over to Tainted Orphans. Ruth are GG. Nicely done by Tainted Orphans, like I said. Their communication was just too strong. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And look at this comp. Like, this is as meta as it gets. Johanna, Lee Ming, Greymane, Decker, Dahaka. It's a really, really strong comp. I like what Minion Miners were doing, but there's a reason certain heroes are meta and certain heroes aren't. Nobody wants to play Johanna for 75 games in a row. Trust me, I know. And you gotta see, it was really, really one-sided. 14 to zero. Yeah. Team just playing far too well to capitalize on all the mistakes Minion ma Miners made. Um, they were still able to get a kill a minute. Almost 14 minutes on the timer, 14 kills. They really were able to put on an incredible performance here. And of course, the majority of those kills on Li Ming and Greymane, but Deckard got several last hits during <laughs> that game. Battle Deckard confirmed. And if we look on the other side here, we try to look for where this might have gone a bit wrong. And it looks like it appears to be in the Stukov and in the Nubarak. Nubarak really did try his best and he did tank a reasonable amount of damage. But it's half of what Johanna tanked. He's a squishy boy and squishy boy into grey main means explosions. And Stukov, he does have the burst healing, but he wasn't able to get to anyone in time before they were detonated. So a stronger frontline may have been the key here. 
it was just really unfortunate. The team never really could take a 4v or a 5v5 team fight. When they had the one opportunity for a 5v5, I really thought it was going to go their way, but then they blew the gas a little too early and had to retreat because they had no more defensive tools. However, this is a series. We have one more game, maybe two. We'll see if Minion Miners can't bring it back. Very true. Now, let's have a look at some of these turns. Now, interestingly enough, I already mentioned it at the start. Charge Blasts coming in for the Li Ming, combined with Aether, War with Aether Walker and Mirror Ball. Now, it's an unusual talent selection, but Charge Blast is still very strong and can get some really solid value. So it was kind of cool to see that popping in here. The question is, will they go continue down that stars? You should triumvate, spin the meta pick. We have at the, the hold your ground fanaticism, eternal retaliation. Now, eternal retaliation combined with holy fury on the Johanna. They really went in for that AoE damage. Ah, they wanted to pick them off and it worked well. They just kind of melted. Oh, All man. right, there is our game. And I see Ash Mantle, thank you very much for redeeming your treats. Let me grab those. Lily is right here. Where did my treats go? Uh, they were on the floor. They were on the that's floor. That's where asked them to be. Oh. All right, I've got some little ones in here, so we'll just give her a little treat. I'm gonna guess that. We'll give her a couple of little ones. How about that? That makes I sense. I don't have my dog cam set up right now because my knee would be in the way, and then I would show you my feet, and no one wants to see that. So we're gonna do this the kind of janky way. So pardon the, the mess. Way. Oh, oh, don't janky cat. Oh, that's what they call <laughs> me when I throw the game. <laughs> so we're gonna do this the yeah the, the, the janky uh, way. Sorry, it's filthy. I know. Uh, Lily, come get a treat. Come get a treat. Come on. Oh, she come peek. On. She peek. You wanna sit nicely? What is it? It's in what the is way. it eating? I don't oh, know. Oh, it's what that. Oh, it was your deodorant. There you go. Good Nom. job. Yes, good girl. All right, move that back, get it in the right position. Yeah, we're in the we're in the we're in the earth right now. Now we're in the. Um, it was beep, there, beep. and then this was that, and then that's too low, and then. All that. right, treats. Remember, we use three treats a day per dog, so you can get a total of nine treats. Lily is looking like she's begging for some more. Ah. Thank you very much. She appreciates that because I don't give her enough clearly. All right, so going to game number two. Game at number two, and it looks like we already have our map. Uh, actually, let me do the uh, let me do two things before I tell them that the casters are ready. Let's turn that back oh, on. It's JoJo, she heard there was a treat too. I don't want you in here though, because you're gonna bark. So you're gonna bark, Shoot. and you're gonna Shoot. knock something over, Shoot. most likely. Go away. And we have our next map. I love you, but go away. It is Infernal Shrines. And because of the team picks, this was chosen by Tainted Orphans, as you can see here. Did it. Right. Just before we get started, MKJ69, thank you very much for the follow. Benjamin, thank you so much for the follow. Once again, Ash Mantle, we appreciate the tree. It's a... Uh, if Jinxie Cat and Tetra use the same camera, do they both still get caster credit in NGS? This is on my channel, so technically Tetra is my co-caster. Correct. We have a draft, ladies and gentlemen. As you can hear, we're going to head in for game number two. Hello and welcome back. The only thing you missed while we were playing that lovely stinger made by this is Kovi. Johanna and ETC were banned away. We are on Infernal Shrines, as I'm sure you heard. GG Wolf and Valerina, thank you guys so much for the follow. Welcome to the Undead Army. I hope you guys are enjoying your time here. And hello, Valkymer. It's good to see you, my friend. I haven't gotten to see you hardly at all this season. Zool removed as well. Three, two and a bit tanks removed here and Greyman taken out as well. But again, Rhaegar, who was left uncontested completely in the last game, is still available. Let's see if either of these teams prioritize them at all. Trying to think what we can see here. Will we see it? It's going to be the Rainer first pick. That's actually what I was just about to say. Hemibo on that Rainer though. Now, there are, is the swap option after the draft house concluded? But we could see a different player on the Rainer and see what they can do with it in their hands. Very true. There's always that potential for the for the quick swappies. 
Tassadar, another hero who is the highest of priorities right now and is yet to be picked, but we're going to open up with Malganis here. So a bit low on the crowd control. Will to live is going to pick up that Tassadar. Just called it. It makes its way in. Tassadar is so strong on this map, able to clear out those minions really quickly. I like the Malganus, especially with the two top tier tanks being picked away. Malganus is kind of second tier right there with Garage, so very strong still. And I, Tassadar is just so strong right now. We saw it today in um, earlier tournament. Anubarak and Regar picked up for the side of minion miners. Finally seeing that Rhaegar make his way in. A new Brack again, though still a little bit squishy, but better into Tassadar, so this is fine. And with Greymane removed, this is certainly better. This is significantly more sensible, and this is Minion Miners adapting and improving. And I like to see this as we see Tainted Orphans with their next ban. Offlaners will probably be the priority here. No, they ban a mage. They remove Jaina here. Jaina is so strong into people like Malganus because the infinite slow makes it hard for his wind-up CC to really connect. Um, also, a bloodlust Jaina running at you is quite terrifying. When they're sped up and you're slowed down, it feels awful. I'd like to see, like you said, solo lane prioritization since we saw a little bit of struggling for the side of the solo lane. Something, you know, that really counters Anubar or uh, Ragnaros if that's what they're going to go for. But it is going to be the Deckard ban. The Deckard was played so well last game, they don't want to deal with it again. I've worked out why it was so loud. I am not going to be able to fix that until after the stream. That's all, all right. right. We'll speak loud, quiet. Well, I've already adjusted the volume, so it should be fine. All righty. So we have the Stukov Yorel. Disengage against the Bloodlust. We've already seen it from Deckards. We've seen it from Stukovs. These are the two main supports who are good for that. To really remove, really disengage yourself. Your Rel's also fantastic with that massive knockback stun. Here comes the Deathwing. Not a Bloodlust target, but also not an ancestral target. So it swings and roundabouts, I guess. And final pickup. Deathwing will be taking the offlane position, so we need another range damage. And it is going to be Lee Ming coming in for the second time, but on the different team. It's kind of like the team comps have just, like, swapped around a little bit. Actually, no, not really. The only thing that swapped is Lee Ming, huh? Because uh, it was it was Bruther on that Raider last game. So, Deathwing into Yorel. How do you feel about it? Deathwing into Yorel is pretty easily a win for Yorel. If Yorel plays well enough, she can sidestep Deathwing. She has put some of the best lane sustain out of any hero in the game, outside of maybe Leoric. But her actual damage in lane and mobility makes her almost impossible to take down if you're on a Deathwing, and she will absolutely bop him if she plays well <laughs> enough. However, a less good Yorel will struggle a little bit, as Deathwing is a very much easier hero to play. So in this case... We'll have to see if Yorel is able to play around those Deathwing abilities. Maya, though, is the final pickup, meaning Tassadar as the main rain, main and only ranged damage is going to be interesting. Tassadar or Leeming, I guess Rainer too. There are only three ranged heroes in the entire game right now, so we should see a lot of fights with a lot of high impact, die from both teams. Uh, I'm looking at this. I believe in the minion miners. I think the deck with wing is a really good solid choice laying on the point a lot of uh, Lane control and global presence However, I am worried about the warden's cage task that I think that'll be very strong on the points That is fair. I'm looking at this and In terms of actual sustain, I think I do prefer the side of Tainted Orphans a little bit more. I think they have a little bit more control over team fights. As long as Maiev can do her damage and doesn't go in too far, we'll have to see as we are heading in to game number two of this best of three series. Alrighty, on the left hand side, we have Waffle Man sitting in the base. Must have had to run and let the dog out or something. And there they are. Will to live on that Tassadar, Bridge to Death on that Malganus, Revar on that Maiev, and variations on the Urel. And on the right-hand side, it is going to be Minion Miners with Brutha playing the Ragn play the Ragnaros, playing the Deathwing, Himibo on the Rainer, Weskra on the Anubarak, Marshall uh, melee last time, Rage this time on the Li Ming, and Sir Mako Cheese playing on the Rhaegar. Everyone's stepping up just to do the 5v5 fight. Deathwing teams do have a little bit of priority in these fights just because they are very strong. And I see you hovering over that Draconic Might. Let's take a look at it. So it's this... Okay. Bit of focus. A new backs out. Force wall down, though. Good stun by Yorel. Body box is nice. And Sir Mac and Cheese will perish. 
unfortunate nice layering of cc by the side of uh, tainted orphans they went in with the sleep were able to knock him back get that wall and there was nothing that poor doggy boy could do all right moving back draconic might this is really good against percent damage which you will get later and i don't know if my f has i don't think she does um i don't believe so tas does but this build is not indicative of it all right, it is a nice protection just to make sure that when you're getting hammered, you have a little bit of extra time. So if a lot of burst damage is coming down to you at once, which Tassadar does provide, as does my Ev, you can have a couple of seconds to make sure you don't take any damage. As seen right there, no damage taken from the URL. The URL, however, has been able to pick off one of those armor plates. And as such, making it a little harder for Deathwing to stay in late. He doesn't have any health regen for this. His auto attacks heal him in this case, which is what we see with the first part of Draconic Might, which might allow him some extra sustain. And I, maybe, I mean, if he worked with Bloodlust, that would have been a fantastic talent. But in this case, he is just going in for the fact that there are several melee heroes in the form of Malganis, who he won't get CC'd by, Maiev, and of course, the Urel. It'll be really strong. It does say that our Deathwing is probably going to be going a little bit more melee, so they can go ahead and get those uh, uh, autos off. However, Rainer caught out of position. Bonds is just and dead. Nicely done, Tainted Orphans. We're going for full auto attack Deathwing. This was the release build, but honestly, I'm not too sure about it personally, but they're bringing it back with Dragon's Ire here. The extra damage by 25% if he has three or fewer armor plays. Currently, he has two. Sorry, he has one. Wait, yeah, it must be t it must be two because I otherwise he would always have three. Yeah, I don't know how Deathwing armor plates work. Like, I'm just gonna level with you. Um, so I'm gonna assume ten, and if he loses it that last armor plate, he's dead. Twenty, thirty, forty. Okay, that makes sense. I know if you heal up, but you don't go into the air, you don't get your armor back. So. Correct. This is going to be the sustained Deathling. He wants to be in the air a little bit less. Level 7, we might see the splat talent. Um, unless that's what I call it, the one that comes down. I reduces like it. spell armor. Poke is our, so Lee Man can go ahead and poke him down. Hello, yep. Kaleo. Welcome to the stream. I think Yurel is good if she plays Yurel enough, too. Fair enough. You know what? If you're good at it, if you play a lot of hero, you're probably good at them. Very true. So the main point here, I think, for Deathwing is, even though I talked about it earlier, for starters, I was proved wrong earlier today in Method Mayhem, but we also have the uh, words of hard. The Elementium plating, I think, will be fantastic with this build because it will allow Deathwing to actually get properly stuck in. We see the trade coming out. Minion Mine is really making the most of this. They're behind. A actually, they're even on XP, but they don't think they can win an objective fight for now, so they go for the objective. They go for a, a building instead. However, three man rotation making this a three versus three fight, and Hibby Bow going to get body blocks. Team abandons him. I don't know why they didn't just try to take the fight with Rhaegar on the way. Yeah, definitely a strange play. I think it's because they had been caught out, and it was just a little bit of panic that set in. Nicely done by Tainted Orphan. See, uh,. Will to live and Bruther stepping up here, trying to do a little bit of damage onto each other and grab these. We are 28 to 1, with Deathling finally stepping up. But now both teams are coming up. We'll see if Minion Miners can't try and get this uh, objective as the Cataclysm comes out onto Stukov. Stukov zoned away, a little bit of objective damage done here. By the way, Seeker on Infernal Shrines coming in from Lee Ming. Now it's going to be good for exactly that situation, <laughs> hitting Tassadar, but she's got to avoid a lot of stuff here. I believe in it. That is the confidence of a Lee Ming. However, they aren't able to grab this first Punisher. Deathwing hops into the air, going to go get some soak elsewhere while the team tries to deal with big old John Cena. Seeker's very good against the Immortal. In fact, a will assist them in their race here. They go for Force Armor 2. So they're very much going for a more Q-based build. I would kind of like to see them go for Fireflies at levels uh, at level 16. Really race this down because look how quickly they killed that Punisher. We were taking a ton of damage. The Force Wall prevents the team from chasing any further. We see them come out with two Fan of Knives, three Fan of Knives. They missed the third one, so they won't have another reset for a couple of seconds. They're jumping in, try to get the bonds off. Do not. So they're just going to go ahead and have to be content with taking the wall. 
I really like what Minion Miners did, considering this is the end result. They got more than uh, Tainted Orphans did with the objective, so I think it was smart play by them, even though they did end up losing Rainer early on. Yeah, it worked out in their favor. They were able to defend that. Well, not in their favor, but it definitely could have been worse. They defended that very well. Seeker shots coming in from Marshall get slowed pretty severely. Managed to land a lot of these Seekers, though. Again, I would be very happy to see Fireflies here really spam that in. If, you, if you're that accurate... You might as well go for the cooldowns and I get them more. I am just so impressed by Marshall. Like, holy moly. Just hitting all those. I can't even hit three magic missiles, like, on my own. <laughs> With Mirabal. With Mirabal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So really nicely done. I'm excited to see what they can do with it. Do you see Tainted Orphans trying to pick up all the camps, denying them from minion miners? But mm, with the that can hit all their Seekers, not the end of the world. They'll be able to clear these out fairly quickly, and they should be able to get up to their Bruiser camp in time to clear it before the next objective, as it will be up in just a couple of seconds. They hold and defend this as level 10 is available for both teams. Massive shove for the Stukov here. Tass, yet to pick, but with Psystorm, this should probably be a black hole build. I would be super excited to see Black Hole. Most of the time we see Archon, uh, most of the pro players agree that it is the better uh, heroic, but it, it is, is Black Hole. Very nice. These tight corridors are going to come in clutch as the game progresses. So let's have a look at their follow-up here. So they have Black Hole plus Psy Storms with Psyonic Echo and the Psy Infusion here. Really going to try and set that up. You, uh, Maiev already up to four stacks of Bonds of Justice. Not bad at all. And then they're otherwise going to be very reliant, probably on Stukov, which is why we don't see any of the lurking arm talents, because he's just going to try and combo a virulent reaction at level 13. I would really like to see from Tainted Orphans, uh, that is Warden's Cage. Yes. Um, Warden's Cage into Black Hole, and your enemy is just like, can I please control my character? Variations and a little bit of trouble here, but Weskara has to back up. After the towers do so much damage to them, it will get out. Unless they jump in like a madman, and that's exactly what they're going to do. 1v5, no fear. No bloodlust here. You can tell by the Li Ming build. No charge blast or anything to really capitalize off it. And the fact it's a Li Ming. So we are committing more to an ancestral healing here. Focus on the Li Ming. Focus on everyone else. Really keep everyone topped up and healed. Makes sense. With one less target for bloodlust. Due to the Deathwing. It does make sense and will work out probably a little bit more value. Definitely, I'd love to see here with the Bellarine Roar once that comes out. They do have to burn the Cataclysm early to escape. Ancestral coming out equally as quickly, but Bridge to Death, super low, has to use that Carry On Swarm to escape. Able to stay alive. Meaty is coming in. Bridge to Death nearly finished off by Deathwing from the sky there as he dropped some Skyfall Meteors, getting some decent damage here. 15 to 14, pretty close to the way. Here comes a multi man Teva. Three members of a great lurking arm. Takes out Raider with the black hole cruising on through. They pick up the triple kill. Deathwing in full retreat here. They can't exactly stop him from leaving, but they can certainly buff him and then finish him off with the side storm. Nicely done. What I was going to say is I would like Deathwing to be on the ground when that Warden's Cage comes because they are so large and since they aren't able to be CC'd, they can just walk around the edge and kind of cancel out that ultimate. However, he was unfortunately too low to stay in the fight, had to jump out, and that is going to be a four-man wipe for the side of Tainted Orphans who should pick up this a, a, a Punisher. Yeah, they're going to get that. I wouldn't actually be surprised. Uh, there's not really anything on the map for them to get to make it value for delaying this. So, yeah, they'll probably just rush this down. They're already splitting off to gain more value on the map, so delaying it isn't going to do anything for them unless they do need a camp to leash. But they've already leashed this camp. They've already leashed this camp. They want to leash this camp, then maybe, but otherwise they can just take it. Fun fact, this is the only map besides Blackheart's Bay oh, the camps right. don't uh, despawn when uh, the objective is taken. And it looks like, just like you said, Toucher, they want to go ahead and grab all these, so they're going to leave the objective at 39 minions. Uh, however, yeah. this does leave an opportunity for um, minion miners to come through and maybe get some picks. Not the objective, but some picks. The miners do come through, see if they can find anyone, but they will back away. Now the Punisher is available. So yeah, the camps obviously did despawn, but they are able to push with this. So now, Yorel, 100% uncontested of a Fallen Shaman camp, is going to get a fall and maybe more. We see Deathwing coming up, and I think it would be wise for them to step up and try and de-push that camp, despite the fact that they aren't going to be able to do a whole lot to Yorel. And we can see her actually moving to the middle lane, trying to get some damage on that middle tower. 
Deathwing's down the top lane, like you said. Fire and Fury coming in for him, so he really has gone full auto-attack build here. They push forward. Punisher taken out quick. Wall. This is really some Seeker value here, and this Seeker is carrying the wave play here along with Exterminator. They are keeping these, but they are losing every Punisher, but they're clearing them up so fast. Uh, the fort was already dead, so there wasn't a whole lot to worry about. Definitely able to clear out that middle fort. Could be in trouble as the team engages onto him. Has to Cataclysm out, we can see from the mini-map. Warden's Cage comes out. Uh, Li Ming gets poked in, backed away, no problem. Pox Populi coming in and popping pustules. Oh, I hate that one. Poor Stukov. Good job we have a pop filter. We see I hate Templar's <laughs> verdict. No, uh, we do have the percentage damage for Templar's verdict, as you did call at the start here for Urel. Yeah, definitely. So it should be much more difficult to uh, go ahead and damage, or much more easy, excuse me, to damage that Deathwing in lane. However, the team is roaming as five. They're just basically deathballing at this point. We shouldn't see Urel too far away from the team. Out comes the Disintegrate, trying to do a little bit of damage. Molten Breath continuing to do to harass them down. Bridge to death also being pressured here. He is quite low, really has to stay away. Bruther. Keeps it. Those armor plates up, but he is taking a bit, a bit of damage. Marshall harassment, but they don't actually want to fight here. This is really tough for minion miners. They can't contest these points. Just the amount of AoE on the side of Tainted Orthos is proving a little bit too much, and they just kind of have to deal with what Tainted Orphans is throwing at them. Nothing really available to contest on the map at this moment. Hopefully, minion miners can take this as a chance to get 16 and then look for a fight before level 20. Seeing mid lane being cleared up. And there it is. Fireflies. I was hoping for it. Coming in for Li Ming. Ready to go for spam damage. The accuracy is there. Beetlejuice. We have the Burning Rage. Conflagration. No Elementium plating here. And we are going to see Deathwing go in. They are level 16, so this is the perfect time to fight. New Rack berries on. Variations very low. Doesn't nice. even get a chance to pop the ultimate. Oh. They get the kill. Their first kill of the two games. They're going to try and get Bridge of Death there. Black Hole. Will zone everyone away, though, and that will allow Bridge to Death to escape. Really nicely done by Minion Miters. That was a great invade. They knew where the team was going, and they knew they exactly where they had to fight. Still trying to fight. Bridge to Death is very far forward here. Gets slowed by the Earthgrass Totem of Rhaegar. Trying to finish him off, but they don't seem to want to commit even further to this. Even though they had a man advantage, they didn't want to fight it, as Deathwing will take to the sky. Deathwing incredibly low there, and... Awkward position to fight just because Mayav and Tassadar in those tight corridors like we were mentioning beforehand makes it really difficult to step up and do damage without taking it yourself. I think they decided, you know what? We got one man. We're closer now. We're only a level behind at this point. Let's see if we can't get one of these Punishers and push because the Seeker value, the Rainer value should be a good push if me and Miners are able to go ahead and grab this Punisher. Well then. They're going to make their way out. Deathwing will land to help them de-push in this middle lane. Meanwhile, though, the objective being taken. No contested yet. But finally, we're seeing everyone heading their way up there. All the lanes are safe. Can they make something happen with this? I sincerely hope so, because I'm really tired of minion miners giving away these objectives for free. They can't do well when they take the 5v5, as we just saw a moment ago. They just need some sense of urgency when getting to these objectives. Deathwing is damage buffed. He's ready. Get a Molten Breath once again. Not able to find a target. 24 to 2. They're still going to attempt to take the fight, though. Bruto takes a lot of damage. Back it up. Cataclysm coming down, but he's already very low here, and he's just being skipped by the enemy team. Warden's Cage holding down Wesker, but the cleanse is good. Himibo, though, completely isolated, is going to be trapped and killed off here with no contestion here. In the meantime, we just see Yorel and Malganis running down Deathwing alone. And Central comes out, and that will keep Wesker alive. But Sir Macro Cheese might be in trouble. Here comes the chase with the slow from Stukov. They use the bats for the chase even, and they're looking for Sir Macro Cheese and pick him up with no trouble. All right, that's going to be a three for nothing, unfortunately. And this Frozen Punisher will go over to Tainted Orphans. Now, this is one they're going to really struggle with. This Punisher shuts off for it, so their biggest defense tool is going to be no more. They're going to have to play this safely. And honestly, if I were Minion Miners, I would just go ahead and uh, give up that top board. It's most likely going to fall. The question is, what can they do? Albert? What can they do otherwise, though? If they lose that keep, it's level 20. That could be end game scenario. Let's have a look at some of those level 20 talents. In fact, we have the upgraded Storm with the upgraded Black Hole with Kugel Blitz coming in for the Tassadar. 
Psionic Storm, every hero that is hit by Black Pulse Center. I have center. never seen that, so this will be yeah, really no one picks interesting. It. No one picks it. It's not amazing, but we'll see if they can make it work. <laughs> Top off coming in here as well. Shadow Orb Huntress, Standard Stuff, Word of Glory, and the Seeker Swarm. Combined with Deep Sleep, this is going to be a bad time for the side of Minion Miners, because everyone's going to be napping. All right, like I said, they're most likely going to lose the keep here, but not the end of the world. The biggest thing the team has to remember is they need to use the keep to defend them. They do not need to defend the keep with their bodies. Growth are taking the John jump and Bridge to death, taking a ton of damage. Punisher comes out, is jumping on the well. We'll see if they can't uh, find some picks off the back of this. Doesn't look like it. Bridge to death, very low. Growth are also equally as low. Gonna have to back up a little bit. Um, they tried to run past the Punisher. <coughs> Excuse me, to start a fight. They were able to run past the Punisher, but they weren't unable to start the fight. So they back up, they clear the Punisher. Brutha, like you said, is low. Gotta be careful of Force Wall. Tether comes out, but it only hit Brutha. Are they able to get value there? Standing in the side storm, Brutha loses another play. I am really impressed. They didn't lose the keep. They lost the wall, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, these Punishers, like we already said, Executioner. That's uh, where Exterminator plus Seeker kind of just burning every single immortal that's being sent their way. Punisher, sorry, that's being sent their way. They're doing a great job here. Everyone's healing up. Deathwing slowly ticking his health up in the sky. Plenty to go, though. The team wants this tribute or this uh, keep. They're going to jump down. The minions are low, and they've done a little bit of damage to the team. Are they going to be able to get it? Variations hit by that Seeker. A ton of health missing. Deathwing has landed. He's already lost an armor plate, but that's good. Buffing that auto attack damage. They do choose to fight. Cataclysm up in 14 seconds. And this keep is still taking damage. They're still committing to this, just very slowly. They're doing a really great job of not hitting the hero, so the minion wave takes the damage. And half health, though, they're not able to grab it. Camps are up, so we'll see if the teams do head down to those. And level 20 is available for minion miners now. And can we just say, like, great job, minion miners, for a really strong defense, despite fighting 19 to 20. We're going to be seeing Destroyer's Rampage here. Increasing Deathwing's damage by 40%, the basic ability cooldowns 50% faster. Cool to see. Don't see that talent very often either. Very nice. But you're seeing the Tower Shards elements. I personally would have wouldn't have minded seeing Arcot pure power here because honestly, looking at this, Li Ming is doing great single target damage, but having that extra AoE damage and more importantly, a scouting zoning tool to try and keep the enemies away from her might be an option. Problem with that, you set yourself as vulnerable for your realm. And, Definitely uh, sorry. having the team jump on you is scary. So I can understand the Tell Rosh is doing a ton of damage, uh, trying to just put out as much as they can because Marshall is doing a really incredible job of carrying this team. They're Seeker getting ton of value, making sure those Punishers are basically non-existent in the team fights, hitting heroes such as Tassadar and Maiev, making sure they have to back out as quickly as they come in. I mean. He's basically 1v9ing at this point and doing an amazing yeah. job making opportunities for the team to go in and do things like grab the cocoon, grab uh, um, most of Bridge's health, so they have to back up. My have currently up to eight stacks of Bonds of Justice, very close to that cleave damage by 50%, which could be a big deal in terms of actual DPS output. She's been trying to use Deathwing as the main target to leash other heroes with that Bonds of Justice, with that uh, with that tether from Umbral Bind, but so far has been unsuccessful. What might be successful, though, is this gank attempt. Good knockback with a penetrating grab. There is the cocoon. Going to be cleared out quite quickly, though. But Sir Mac Cheese, the only one who needs to escape. Good knock up, and Wesker gets everyone out. All right, it looks like the team kind of forgot about Li Ming. Oh, She's oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down comes Deathwing, and I don't know if this is the right play because he's here by himself. He's already going to lose one armor, but a nice fear. Li Ming comes out onto that Maiev, has the Cataclysm through the team. Variations is going to take a ton of damage here, but Deathwing equally so. Bridge to death is very low, has to burn the bats. He gets on, and Deathwing will fall, stuck in the middle of the team with no one to get out. Black Hole comes out, hits nobody. Himibo, however, has to burn the adrenaline. Gets put to sleep, and this should be the end of Rainer. Or maybe? Rainer on the run. Run! He's on the run. <laughs> he's getting up. He's so fast. Oh, no, but she's an instant mount. Oh, the paint the red keeps him alive. Oh, oh he doesn't get the mount. mount. Rainer's Rainer needs to keep attacking, dude. Help him out, Jimmy Bo. <laughs> Jimmy Bo, sorry. He's still Jimmy running. Jimmy Bo is running for his life. He's still running. Use the Raider to dismount them, dude. He boosts. He dodges. 
He's alive. He's just going to try and turn it. He knows he can't leave. He's down. He's dead now. He, j he bought time, but honestly, he's just... He's not really achieved anything. Rhaegar was on the way. He was committed. He was going to try and save him. Oh, it was but all he's very done is close. All he's done is stagger his death, unfortunately. It was a valiant attempt, and I honestly agree with his decision, because there was a chance he could have lived there and joined his team for the team fight, but it didn't work out in his favor. But I agree with the decision. All right. Now the team is going to not contest this. They're going to opt to get the Bruiser Camp instead. Catapult's pushing in this top lane, getting extra pressure up there, keeping the lanes going, making sure it's much harder to contest. All right, Arcane Punisher heading down the bottom lane. Well, yes, it is the bottom lane. So we'll see if Lehman can put this one to bed just as well. See if maybe they, I think they will lose the keep. It's 21 minutes into the game. I have is in the base, has to back up. And now the team is pushing in at two different angles. This will make it a little bit more difficult. Raider up in five seconds for the defense. Death and the Punisher. Of course he does. He's always unstoppable. All right, the Punisher. They pulled it past the keep, which I don't know if this is ingenious or silly because it can't attack the core. It is heading back to the keep now. Keep should most likely fall. That middle keep not long for this world. Uh oh. Well, luckily no one's in position to follow up on that Punisher as it got the double stun onto a new bracket and Lee Ming there, but. No one was in the right spot. In the meantime, this Fallen Shaman Cam is actually getting some decent value. There's a catapult here. Minion's on the way, but here comes Variations coming back to clean that up. All right, so we won't see the keep fall for Minion Miners, unfortunately, but they'll get a nice little chunk. And Yurel's actually knocked them closer, so this is exactly what the camp wants. They're just going to go ahead and push as much as they can. Big Minion Wave coming out. Uh, however, Yurel should be able to clear that easily enough. And we almost saw... Minion Miners get a camp. Bridge to death, going in for the back line. And a fantastic black hole. It's going to hit three members. Himibo is very low, has to burn the Ancestral Healing. Bruther also at about half health, taking a ton of damage. We finally saw the Kugel Blitz being used, but it did not get as much value as they hoped. Here comes the Bellowing Raw, only hitting one member as Bridge to Death is feared out, but Deathwing is sniped down nice and easy as Sir Macro is in full retreat. Westcra body blocked away for the rest of his team, picked off, making that a 2 4 0 with an open core. We are going to be seeing Tainted Orphans pushing it down, looking for one final kill. If they get that, because the damage dealers are still alive, they might be able to end the game. This is going to be a very tough defense for Minion Miners. Uh are going to back up, try and heal up a little bit, and we see everybody pushing up. Now, if they get rooted, this could be detrimental. Just, we see Bridge Death loses a lot of health there, but they're tearing through that shield really quickly. Lehman comes out with a disintegrate. She's jumped on by your route, and the core is falling so fast, it's going to be game. Not able to defend it. Catapults, Impalers, and the entire team versus Lehman. If she got a reset, maybe, but everyone's far too healthy. That is going to be game and series. Going over to Tainted Orphans. All right. Tainted Orphans should be in the spot to uh, now be tied for number two. So great job by them. Moving up one seed. And here we see 14 to one once again. Will to live. Putting the team on their back. Doing lots of damage. That black hole really coming in clutch with the follow-up. Uh, or sorry, with the uh, engage with the Stukov silence and the Maev Warden's Cage. It was very effective. Look at this Tassadar damage at the end there. 50,000. Li Ming, though, topping it off with that Seeker build. Did the hero damage really was just landing so many shots there. And the, hero da and the siege damage, not so bad either. But it didn't work out at the end. Deathwing actually did more than I expected. I wasn't so sure when I was seeing the build. And we can see why that build it does have value. He does do damage. But in this case, he was burst so quickly and his auto attacks are so slow.